my name is Louise and this is the Big Head Bookworm channel. Lovely to see you. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a good day wherever it is you are and whatever it is you're doing. This is Yarn Chat and it is episode eight, I believe. I know, I've done eight of these. Now normally on my channel, on the Big, uh, Big Head Bookworm channel, it is, as the channel name would suggest, all about books. It's all about books I've been reading and uh, books I've been wanting to read and books I have read in the past. That's the kind of stuff I talk about. Very bookish person. But my other love is um, creating, as in yarn, as in using wool or sewing. Um, and so I've started the Yarn Chat series where I talk about... So it's kind of like my knitting and crochet podcast, but I've just called it Yarn Chat. My name is Louise and I live with my husband and our 10-year-old son called Benedict and three cats, all the paws. We're quite equally balanced between people and cats at the moment. No more cats for the time being, thank you very much. Even though every so often somebody mentions getting a kitten, I'm like, no. We're finely balanced as it is at the moment. Um, we live in just outside of St Ives in the east of England. We live in a small village just outside of St Ives, which is a little market town just north of Cambridge where we used to live. Um, and today is Friday the 22nd of June. We have started the descent. <laughs> because we've had the longest day yesterday. It was glorious. Oh, what a lovely day. Um, I should put a picture up here. Here. Because um, we went to the Lido last night for a solstice celebration uh, where you could swim until kind of half half nine at night and they had string band string quartet and string band playing as you were swimming and there was a little bit of champers and oh it was lovely what a way to spend spend the solstice evening it was it was glorious and we are I'm sat in the garden which I don't normally do but it's such a beautiful day today I've got the sun up there shining down on my hair so I have no idea what it's going to do for the colours in this video I now have a helicopter now have a helicopter going over Um, and so there will be flies about and this kind of stuff but I just thought it's such a beautiful day I can't stay in anymore and I have some iced coffee with me um, to keep me refreshed as we talk so yeah so you get your knitting or your crochet or your embroidery or your cross stitch or just put up your feet and let's chat let's just have a little of chin wag um, if ever you want to contact me, I'm probably most active on Instagram. I'm coming off Twitter, I think. Twitter just, just seems a miserable place, doesn't it? I mean, I, mean, I know there are some fun things on there, but lordy, crikey, crikey people. Um, so if you want to contact me, I'm normally on Instagram, and you can come and chat to me there. Oh, I've got a cat just come to say hello. Where's he from? There could be cats that come along. They quite often come and see me during these videos. Anyway, let me show you some of my finished masterpieces. Yes, so... Hello. Yes, that's in the elephant. Last time I was recording one of these videos, you came to see me. Yeah, you looked at me as if so. Did I? Yeah, I think you did. Um, so the first thing I, I finished, uh, well, it's not the first thing I finished, but it's the first thing I'm going to show you, is a bit of crocheted magic that I did. So this is a crocheted headdress. Yes. Yes, I know. I know you're going... Is there any way I can put this on and not it look awful? And it's hard to do it because it's all backwards. Anyway, so this is it. So it's daisies. Can you see? Daisies and crochet. And then you have this little bit here. Can you see that with the leaves? So it's daisies on a vine. And then you can have your... Oh, my, move, if I move my hair around. Um, you can have those. There we are. I just think it looks a bit daft hanging there. I think I'd prefer it that there. So um, last Saturday, a very lovely friend of mine had a party. And she'd done it as a um, boho hippie chic party. I do it like that. That looks okay, doesn't it? Um, a boho party. And we were all to wear our hippie gear. And but, amazingly enough, I could didn't need to get other people having to buy stuff or or hire stuff hire stuff I don't know about that um but I could do it all from my from my own wardrobe because I have quite a good range of boho chic anyway but what I was missing was I was missing flowers in my hair I wanted a headband and so I looked on the old YouTubes and I said crocheted um 
a headdress please flower headdress yes please and this was the pattern that i saw it's by jaden in stitches and it is a youtube video it's about 18 minutes long you have to keep pausing it so that you actually create it so it shows you how to do the vine and even the little leaves which you're supposed to use cotton and i've just used acrylic because that's what I had in my stash and I wasn't going to buy anything for it. Um, and then she shows you how to make the daisies, which I think are lovely. Can you see them? That's okay. And um, that's what you put on. So you, you put on your little crochet and, and then I did five. Did I do five or six flowers? I think I did six flowers and then you just sew them on. You just attach them as and when, as and how you want it. Um, she says you don't need to use this as a headdress, although that's what she designed it as. Um, you can use it as kind of wrapping or something like that or just detailed for a present, all this kind of stuff. It's tricky to know where to put it because you don't want to have the... One of my friends was wearing her was wearing one that she bought. Do you know, we were all there with crochet stuff and she had <laughs> us in the middle of her forehead and I was like, no, I don't think that... Don't think that's the way you do it, darling. So anyway, there we go. That's my little crocheted headdress. And so much so, so but it looked so good on the night. I actually, I had my hair down and I had all plaits and everything like that. You can you can imagine. I went full hippie, um, and I've got really round purple glasses. So I just had the I had the lot. Um, I've got a picture up. I'll pop a picture up here of, of what it more what I was wearing. Um, and so I've had quite a few people ask me to make them one. And the lady that was holding the um, party, my friend who was holding the party, Cloda, uh, she would like um, blue ones, blue flowers. So I'm going to do her some blue daisies. And I thought, I'll do some blue and I shall do some red. And then she can, I'll give her two and then she can give one to her daughter if she wants it. So there we go. So that's my my lovely little, uh, that's, that's better. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, there we are. That's my first finished masterpiece. Took me about an hour, if that. And once you get into it, it's super quick. So if anybody's interested in making one, honestly, it's Jaden in Stitches. I shall write down the name somewhere down here. Um, and it's uh, just on YouTube. You just search up crochet flowers. And and there you are. You too could be wearing this for your hippie festival wear, festival wear this summer. Peace, man, and all of that. So that was number one. So I'm going to take this off because otherwise that's going to jingle jangle. Actually, I could just do it like that. And then I could have flowers in my hair for this video as I sit out here. How lovely is that? There we go. So my second finish mate was I had shown you this in the last video. Um, I was almost completed, but I have completed. Now I have no idea if the colours are going to come out. Because here we are sat in the sun and I don't know whether this is good or bad for colours. So you're going to have to bear with. Um, but this was it. I have two, two. I have a finished pair of these lovely socks. So this is a make for my niece for Christmas. Yes, I am using that C word. Using the C word. Um, Christmas already. But if I'm going to be making socks for people, and I would like to try and do that this year, I need to start early because I don't, you know, some people can do like a, a pair in a week or something crazy like that. I'm just not gonna be able to do that. Um, and nor would I want to do that if I'm honest. It's a nice process, and I don't want to, don't want to rush it. Um, these are just top-down vanilla socks, so I do two by two rib leg. It is normal heel flap and gusset. Not sure how great I am at the picking up the stitches. Actually, I think that side actually is more glamorous. Let's show you that side. <laughs> Slightly better than this side. I'll show you that. Can you see that? There we go. Um, down to the toe. Now, for the first time ever, I have done a contrast contrast toe can you see that um and this was the mini that came with it this was a set from so sweet violet and it was little taylor-esque yarn i can't remember the makeup of the yarn but i think it was 75 percent bfl i think it could well have been i can't remember merino and then 25 percent nylon so it's a good sock kit and you've got 100 grams of the main colour, which is this beautiful Valentine's colourway. And then you've got a contrast mini. I have never done anything with contrast minis before, but I thought I'd have a go and do a toe. And I think it looks really nice. I'm really pleased with myself. That's a nice, a nice sock. So let's show you that. So I have two. So I already have my first Christmas present done. Ta-da! 
So I'm very pleased with myself. These sock blockers I got from a magazine. And now how good's that? You never get sock blockers from a magazine, but I've got them. They're not perfect size, but the sock blockers I have are for my husband's feet. So they're, they're the larger male size. And I didn't have any smaller ones for ladies' feet. So I needed some. So they, they when I saw those in the magazine and uh, Simply Crochet, I think it was. Um, there we go. And they blocked him very nicely. And these are ready to be packed away. I'm actually going to do a little ball band. Uh, these are blocked. I, I am the kind of person who, as they finish a project, weaves in the ends. If I don't weave in the ends as I go, I weave them in immediately. And I block immediately as well. That is just... Uh, my way otherwise I, I know it will be left and I can't bear that so uh, these are all blocked and, and everybody so there we go um, I'm going to do a little ball, bla ball band that's going to have kind of care instructions as well so so there we go lovely so pleased with that so those are my two complete finished masterpieces which I'm very pleased with both of them um, the other thing I have been mainly working on it's very fly out here, so you can see me scratching away. The other thing I have been working on is my shawl, which is my mason shawl. And it's the um, first in the shawl project, number three, from Curious Handmaid, which is Helen Stewart. So there it is, the mason shawl. And this is inspired by The Secret Garden by Francis, Francis Hodge. Hello. Hodgson. Francis, Francis Hodgson Burnett. I knew that, but I didn't know that at the same time, if you know what I mean. So there it is. There's the beautiful Helen showing it. So I was up to, I think I was just about up to that, that row of eyelets when I last showed you. And we had a long debate did we not, about the colour I would transi transition into. Um, I had two options. I'm doing it in uh, Eden Cottage Yarns, the Milburn 4-ply, which is 85% blue face Leicester and 15% silk. So the main body is in this colourway, which is called Rain, because it is the colour of the sky. And the next colour is, this was the debate, I went for, as everybody suggested, estuary, which is the other colour. So it is exactly the same. So it's Milburn, four ply, and it's estuary. And I am quite a long way through. So I was looking it up. The um, Helen Stewart's The Curious Handmade um, Patterns come with a percentage um, all the way through. Let me show you. I'm sure you've seen it like that. So you get, tells you how the row, row number, detail, how many stitches and then the percentage. So you do this and you can kind of cross off as you go along. I have just done, I've just gone past the 50% mark um, I haven't got that many more rows to do. I have done the majority of the rows, but I'm about to do a massive increase. And that means that each row will be up, up to kind of 500 odd stitches. So suddenly it's going to become, each row is going to become quite long. And this is what it looks like so far. Ta -da. Now, is this going to show at all? There we are. That might be better. So it's a crescent shaped shawl. So down here is the top so you do it kind of upside down so it is garter with eyelets and then there's this lovely kind of structural detail and then we transitioned into the estuary which you were all right you are all completely and utterly correct it had to be this the other color night sky would have been too bold and then we could do this lace section with a bit of garter and then more lace and that's it. It looks a bit raggedy raggedy at the moment because of course it hasn't been blocked. I'm doing it on circular needles. The pattern suggests um, four millimeters, which is I think US size six. And I'm actually doing it on 4.5, which is US size seven. 
or my higher higher sharps my interchangeable set because I'm quite a tight knitter and I find that I uh if I want it to be big and and kind of floopy floppy and and kind of with lots of drape I think they say droppy I always uh, with drape I always think floopy um I have to go up a size or at least at least one size and I chose to just go up one size with this I probably could have gone up to five millimeter but I decided not and that gives you more of an idea of what the pattern is so we're, we've just done this kind of lace repeat um I wondered how how I would go I can make mistakes in lace I seem I think it's the yarn overs I've got a fly those little thunderbugs it's because it's so hot and I've got some beautiful my bush is in flower. I know. So I had to. I kept saying to myself, do not mention your flowery bush. Do not mention your flowery bush, woman. Can't help myself. So vulgar. Um, <coughs> so I, I can, I miss a yarn over. That's what I've discovered I do. I could never work out why I would seem to have difficulties with um, lace. And it's because every so often I'll miss a yarn over. I don't believe I'm the only person that ever does that, but I'm getting a lot better. I'm using stitch markers to help with my count. Um, and this pattern was actually really nice. I really got into it and I could read it. I think when you start to become more confident about reading the stitch, you're not so reliant on following, slavishly fo following the pattern, you know, the written instructions. You could just read the stitch and see what should be there. And that made, that makes made sense to me so it's looking good now so I'm really pleased with myself I haven't gone off I, when I was doing one row I suddenly found out I'd missed two yarn overs but I because I was able to read where I was up to read my work um, I was able just to put them in and it was fine because you can add a yarn over can't you there we go so that's it so I'm doing a bit of a bit of garter stitch then I've got so I've got garter stitch for the neck for another 10 rows yeah, I have. Ten more rows of this colour, estuary. Um, doing garter stitch, basically, with an I-cord binding. And then we get into more garter stitch, but I've switched colour. And then we do a massive, we do a, a big increase, more garter stitch, and then it's another pattern, a lace pattern at the end. So it's going to be glorious. It really is going to be glorious. And eventually, each row will be over 500 stitches, and so... I'll be taking my time going through it. Um, but I'm really enjoying it and I'm loving how it, it looked. I was wondering this morning if I should have actually gently merged the colours and tried to fade it in instead of getting this big line. Can you see I've got a big line? But it does say just switch over. It doesn't suggest that you should fade it in. But then if you're doing speckled, it might fade in a bit, a bit more yourself. But I still think it looks lovely, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, so, yeah. So that's my big shawl. It's going to be glorious. Admittedly, not really shawl weather at the moment. I know. But um, it is lovely comfort knitting. And once I'm on a garter row, we could take it anywhere. You don't need to take a sock knitting to go anywhere. I mean, it's, you just pull it out and you just vroom along. And the actual yarn is a pleasure. Just glorious to work with. I am a kind of complete convert to Eden Cottage yarns I would actually just like to move in with her move in with Victoria and, and she could just make yarn for me that's what that's what I'd like so I'm um, it's living in my um, handmade me made project bag which is my elephants um, but I'm actually going to change it and I've brought it down I'm going to change it into my Debbie Bliss Harry's Tweed bag because that's slightly bigger and it's it needs a bit more space so I shall put that on there and I shall move that afterwards sorry if I'm bumping you around so um that's all I've really got on the needles at the moment I have got some other crochet projects oh I've forgotten I did do another finished masterpiece I had forgotten the reason I forgot is I haven't got it with me I shall show a picture of it here yes it's a crocheted poo um one of my friends asked me to um crochet a um poo emoji a cute poo emoji for her granddaughter because she likes poo who doesn't like poo that's what i ask you um so i made a cute uh crocheted poo emoji and it was just a um 
set of, a, a set of instructions. It was a pattern that was on Pinterest. So I searched on Pinterest for cute uh, for poo emoji crochet pattern. I think that was what my my search. Yeah, that was my search. And this came up. It's very easy. I had everything in. It is literally just uh, brown acrylic by Stylecraft. And I had some black acrylic by Stylecraft in the special DK. I used hook size 4. No, 3.5. 4 is too gappy. It needs to be a 3.5. And I whipped that up one afternoon. And I was happy to give it to her so yes that's what that was my <laughs> my other I thought I had something else to show you but I don't have it here unfortunately um but it's joyful to make up and it's a it's a, I'll tell you what's a quick satisfying crochet because you do it and it's done it's a bit like this really just do it and it's done and it's fun and it, it's not a long thing I quite like to have I quite like to intersperse my longer knits or my longer crochet with something quick and dirty to um uh, to, to keep me feeling that I'm, I'm achieving something in some way. So there we go. That's what I did that. So I haven't got anything else on. I haven't got anything else on. So I have actually skeined up my next sock for, again, gift knitting. And I am using this. So I got this as a mystery, Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club from Nora George Yarns. So it's a sub, it's a kind of a, I don't know if she does them monthly or bi-monthly or how often she does them, but I was watching her um, podcast that she does, which is Crafts from the Third Floor, and she was talking about Mrs. Weasley's Knit Club. This was February uh, 2018, and the um, name of it is The Quibbler. Now this isn't particularly my kind of colours, so I was a bit super wash. It's super sock, which is super wash merino, seventy five percent, twenty five percent nylon, hundred grams. It also comes with a mini, and I think that's what elevates it really. It is lovely. It is a kind of a cream, and it has got all these pops of colour. I don't know whether you can see in this this light. It might not be the best, but there we are. It's, it's a cream with little pops of neon colour. But the black mini that comes with it really does something to it I believe so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the cuffs I'm going to do the first two rows in black then I'm going to knit it as my standard vanilla sock and do the toes in black as well so that's how I'm going to incorporate the black and make it lovely and this I think is going to be for my sister-in-law who is um, mummy of the niece that I'm buying so so yes because I know her size of her feet as well so that that is living in my so sweet violet bag ready for me to cast on with my standard metal needles I use two um, DPNs at 2.25 £2.60 when I bought them and they are great and it will be a vanilla pattern and that's what I'll use so, that's, so I've got to yet to cast that on and I need to do that um, but that's it at the moment. That's all I've got. I've got going. I really am enjoying the shawl, and I look forward to doing that. I do want to um, cast on a crochet cardigan for the, is for this kind of weather because in the evenings I can get chilly. I am just one of those people. You can see my fastening. I don't like that. Um, I'm one of those people that that likes a little. To I can get a bit cold in the evenings. Um, once the sun's got, gone in and I would like a little crocheted cardigan all the ones I've seen are short sleeve but I could extend them to be long sleeve I've never crocheted a garment before so it has to be quite an easy one for me to get into the into the construction and I thought crochet would be quite good because it would be quite loose I have got some wool upstairs which I'm planning on using and I've got enough I've got three skeins which will be enough for a crochet cardigan I believe so that is something I'm looking forward to starting in the next week once I've got a little bit further with that shawl I think I'm going to launch into it and we haven't got this is like the first weekend in yonks we haven't actually got anything on so this weekend would be a good weekend to do it so let's move on oh I can my son's over there, Benedict, and he's just poked his tongue out at me. <gasps> so rude. Hello, lovely. Okay, there we are. Let me just wave at me now. So let me show you some stuff that's come in. I haven't ordered anything, but this is stuff that I had ordered and that didn't that came in after the last 
video I recorded. He's gone now. And it was two sets of skeins, two lots of skeins from Babbles Yarns, which is Grace over in Ireland. And she is flipping fabulous. And she has the most amazing podcast, um, which is, I think, Babbles Yarns. I can't remember. What is her? Does it say what it is? Hand Dyed in Ireland by Grace O'Neill. I can't remember what her podcast is, but I think it's Babbles Travelling Yarns. That's it, Babbles Travelling Yarns. I love it, I love it. She's just got so much oomph and she's just glorious and she's got the cutest cat called Mr Beans who who I would love to give a big squidge to because he's gorgeous. Anyway, she did her first... Was it her first show? She did Woolen in, in Dublin, so she'd done the massive um, dyeing session for that and then there was a massive shop update afterwards because she didn't sell all her stock that would have been very surprising for anybody to do that really um, so there was a big shop update and I'm, would, I just thought oh I really want to buy some more lovely yarns for sock making for Christmas so these were deliberately bought um, to make up as sock gifts for Christmas and my Christmas knits so this is can you see I'm not I have no idea if this is coming out um it's a glorious it's called tealicious tealicious and it is just all the different colors of teal and it is beautiful it is a bamboozle which is 60% mule sing free merino wool 25% bamboo 15% nylon and it oh it's lovely and I thought it is going to be slightly more eco-friendly it being bamboo and I really fancied having a go with bamboo and seeing how that is and actually it's got a lovely shine to it so I think this is going to knit up beautifully so I got two skeins of this I thought that could be kind of boy -y as well boys could wear that kind of colour or girls, I mean, anybody could wear that colour. And the other one I got was this fabulous, look at those, uh, fabulous one. And it's called On The Turn, which I think is glorious because it's all those, it's like the turn of the year. And it's the same base, it's the uh, bamboozle base. This is actually not as soft, it's got a bit more to it, but I just love the colours. Oh, look at that. Can you see all those colours in there? And I I was like, oh, I don't know if I want these to be socks now when they came. I think I'd like this to be something. But um, I, I am going to do it as socks. I'll be annoyed with myself if I don't do it as socks, even though I do want to do it as something else. <laughs> and I've got two skeins of this. Uh, is it 400 metres? Yeah, 100, 100 gram hank is 400 metres. So. There we go. So I've got two and two. So I've got four of these. So I've got lots of socks, lots of sock options. I had a good go through my yarns the other day. I got rid of quite a lot actually and gave them to a friend, gave them, offered them to some of my friends who rummaged through and then somebody else has taken them to take to their primary school because um, she works in a primary school and she's going to take them and so that they can use them in their craft clubs and use them in their classes so I feel really good about that it's stuff that I have bought and I've used as much as I you know I bought for a project and I had stuff over and then um, the other thing was that um, I'd been given yarn over the last couple of years and instead of going actually that's not for me I, I, I'm not going to use it I've gone oh lovely thank you very much and it was, it was never going to be my kind of stuff. My tastes have changed in some ways. Um, I'm refining who I am with in my kind of sock way and my knitting way and my crochet way, and which I think is brilliant. I mean, that's what happens, isn't it? The more that you delve in, the more that you find your own taste, and that's part of the joy. So, Tangent, gone down. Come back now, come back. Oh. My ice cold tea is... Not so ice cold, I'm honest. So the next thing I bought, I treated myself to, was a magazine. Inside crochet. I was going to get Simply Crochet because that's got quite a nice top on. But I thought, you know, I'm never going to do it. And I never, I never really buy this one, Inside Crochet. I thought I'd have a go with this one instead. So that's what I bought. Hello, sweetie. Yes, yes, you went. Yes. Come out here and just come on, very quickly say hello so everybody gets to say hello. So, this is my very, very handsome, gorgeous boy <laughs> who's coming this way instead of that way. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's got a long sleeve top on, even though it's super warm. 
haven't you? Right, you yeah. can go now. All right. All right. Later. Then. Laters. He's utterly the best. Bestest boy ever. I could put this out, but I'm not going to because he is utterly the bestest boy. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I thought I'd get, give this a little go. I quite like that little. It says it's beginner, a designer, Amy, Amy, Amiguri, cheeky cat to hook. And so it looks quite good. I haven't really looked through it before. I haven't really looked through it yet, but I quite liked, like it. Um, you did get this little thing with it. So you've got a very cute little stitch marker make mine a 99 it's kind of cute isn't it and you also got these three pat these three patterns and i really like the idea of doing that vintage ice cream van doorstop i think that looks right up my alley i can see myself doing that um emma varnum i do like emma varnum she did a vw bus doorstop which i think i have got as a download somewhere which i'm very tempted to do love vw buses um, but that might be good as well so there we go so i shall i'll let you know if i if i do anything out of that there are some some wraps and smaller things and they're quite nice aren't they every so often to have, have a it kind of the only thing about magazines is sometimes you can buy them and then they just stack up and you don't use them that's my only thing. That's my only worry is that I've I've got I keep buying magazines and I'm not I'm not using them. So I'm really going to have to make sure I do use them if I do buy them. The problem is also they're wrapped up so you can't even have a look in the supermarket to actually see whether there is going to be something in there that you want to use. Brr, cheeky. Something else. So we're now going to move on to sewing. So that's all the kind of the wool stuff that I've got. That's it. I'm afraid this isn't going to be too long, is it? Oh, half an hour. Normally I can be a bit epic, so I'm quite glad about this. Um, my chum, I'm now moving on to material and sewing, because I do want to do some sewing. I've been wanting to do it for ages, and I just haven't had the time. Um, I haven't made the time. I've had the time. I haven't made the time. There is a difference. Anyway, my chum, who I, I took some of the yarn off me, gave me some of this, and she just, she just went, oh, I saw this. I was clearing through my stash of yarn. I saw this and thought, that is Louise is yarn. So it is a lovely sugar skull cotton. Let me see, how much does it look like? Looks like a good quarter of a meter maybe half a meter of uh so i don't think i, I won't be able to make it something in but it will be, be able to be added as a detail if not made as a project bag so i've got enough for a project bag um or to be added as pockets or something to a to an outfit so i like that so thank you very much beautiful lady beautiful lady um and the other I've got three pieces of material and I want to make two of these. I bought this pattern some point last year and it is Simplicity Pattern by Dotty Angel. Simplicity 1080A paper pattern. Old fashioned, old fashioned paper pattern, which is what I like. Um, I love Dotty Angel's designs. Her, her designs are completely my aesthetic. All three of those are cuter than cute, but I want to make that. That one there. I do like the kind of all in all one colour, but I think I like this, the three different fabrics. I think that's what I like. So that's why I was saying I could even see myself using that as a pocket design on one of those patterns but now I really like these kind of dresses and, and these kind of tunics I'm quite tall and so the difficulty I has, have in them is that they're just not long enough so if I could get a pattern that I could comf comfortably whip up and adjust to my height then I could make it several times and make it my own. So I'm very pleased with that. The other thing that I have with a lot of these kind of dresses or these kind of tunics is they quite often have waist definition. I have no waist. I have no waist. Even when I was at my, I think I've mentioned this before, when I was at my slimmest, 
I don't go in. I am a surfboard. I'm literally up and down. I, I just, I don't go in. I look at other people's waists and I say, oh, how nice. So any of those kind of tea dresses with a kind of waist definition look awful on me. I don't go, I just don't go in enough to make it sit on me nicely. So this one is much more of an empire, um, empire line so that the definition comes from under the boo which is better than me so so kind of the, sh the cinching in and the shaping is under the boob now what tends to happen when I buy these and I'm sure happens to an awful lot of people I mean nobody is the kind of the exact size are they well, let's be honest is that this bit isn't long enough so where the bust definition is doesn't sit under my boob it kind of sits on my boob not a look that anybody chooses let's be honest for to have it shaped so that it goes under the boob so I need to I need to kind of do a bit longer here because what tends to happen is if I want it to fit is I have to go up a size or even up two sizes and it isn't because of trying to get it over the old ladies it's because this bit needs to be longer so it tends to be long enough but less shapely and more drowning yeah you're with me so what I would like to do is get with this pattern and just I will have to put um, an increase here on this bit and I will have to put an increase on the length but I have it I have the pattern actually already cut out up upstairs and I have an old duvet an old cotton duvet cover which I'm going to make a muslin over and I've got enough that I can make two dresses out of there and do all the adjustments that I need to so that when I actually come and cut into this lovely fabric I should be quite certain that I know what I need to you know that I will have put my increases in and add it in on these patterns it actually has a cut line as to where you need to increase so there is actually they have anticipated that you may well need to um, increase here I think and it, of course it's not just one side is it you don't just increase in the front you have to increase at the back as well and increase uh, the length on the, on the skirt as well so I'm hoping with some finagling and some help from YouTube, no doubt, I will be able to almost um, arrange the pattern pieces and cut the pattern pieces so that um, I'm going to end up. I've, sometimes I just think it would be easier to start from scratch and actually draw my own pattern. But we'll have a go with this and see how I go. And I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, you with me? Does that make any sense? I hope it makes sense. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. So finish off my now less ice cold. Not so nice. Um, this is what the patterns, the, the fabric that I chose. Flipping gorgeous it is. I got it from Sea Salt. Showing you the cost. Sea Salt, the Cornish home. Well, it is mermaids. It's it's ladies, not mermaids. It's ladies, kind of nineteen thirties, forties pinup ladies are swimming and fishes and sea creatures and oh and it's this gorgeous blue I think I got three meters here yes I got three meters so you could buy it sea salt is a company that you that had these kind of materials and they do um these kind of dresses actually and they do much more kind of relaxed dresses and tunics and what have you and I absolutely love them they're just not big enough and it's not width it's height it is for me it's always a height so if I buy something with a long sleeve they cut they come here and quite often they can be three quarter lengths and so I and then it doesn't fit it doesn't fit around my wrist it, it is too short they had a really lovely wax jacket which I bought and I had to give up on wearing it because the shoulders just weren't wide enough and it wasn't long enough in the arm I'm so frustrated with myself I do get annoyed when I do this the dresses, the bust detail, as I was saying, doesn't sit under my bust. It will sit on the bust and it just isn't as flattering. So I've kind of kind of given up buying, even though it's completely my aesthetic and it's completely my kind of fabric choices and my colour scheme. Absolutely. I've just given up even looking at them because they don't cater for somebody who is five foot nine, five foot ten. They just don't seem to 
to do that. Um, so when I actually saw that they're now selling material, I was like, oh, yes, look at that. So this, say it's cotton. I think it's cotton. It's not quilter's cotton. It's more, it's not cotton lawn, but it's something like that. It is a bit softer than actual cotton. It has a bit more drape, a bit more given it than quilter's cotton. If you think about quilter's cotton, which is this, it has a bit, a bit of a finish on it and is very crisp. This is less crisp and has a bit more of a drape to it. So I got three metres of that and it was... Well, it was £30 near as damn it for all three metres. So it's £10 a metre, so it's not, not cheap. Hence me doing muslins beforehand. This was the second one I got. Let me see. So it's this kind of blue. And I wanted to get blues that would all match. Well, not match, but they'd all con kind of work. They see, they have this kind of colour pattern, this kind of blues. And then I got one metre of fishers. So they're all patterned, which if you can see in the pattern, she's done all patterns. I've done all blues. Hello, you're a big bee. Well, that was a big bee that came to say hello to me. How nice is that? Um, and whether or not I will use all three of these in one outfit, I don't think so. I think that might be one. And that might be another. I have got other materials upstairs which I could use as contrasting ones. This will definitely, I think, be... Definitely see that and that. Can you? What do you think? Oh, they're going to be fabulous anyway. And as you can see, you need... For this one, you need three. You need the top, the skirt, and then pockets. And I've even if I don't use any of these for pockets, I've got plenty of stuff upstairs which I could use as pockets. So there we go. So I, I bought these with that pattern in mind, and I am going to do this in the next, next fortnight. I am. I am determined. I'm not going to buy... I'm not going to keep on buying dresses and tunics that are not long enough for me. I'm just not going to do it. I've got to learn how to do it myself. And it is my, my little mission to start doing that. And then I want to start making T-shirts for myself as well. To make them wide enough on the shoulder and long enough here and long enough arms. I'm just determined to do it myself now. She says confidently now slightly panicking because I sounded so confident so I'm not really that confident but I will be, I will get there I'm quite a confident machinist I'm not a confident pattern cutter or adjuster um, but it's a learning and I'm sure you, me and YouTube we will get there it's perfectly possible to learn how to do these things might not be perfect straight away but then what is what is we can do it friends we can we can do it together and there we go that's it that's all i've got to show you it was quite a lot though and there's a good variety i'm just looking at this color and thinking oh look at that that's gonna be scrumptious yeah i've got some really lovely stuff going on and i'm sat here in my garden with my flowery bush it's lovely isn't it this is, this is nice as well it's all coming out it's all looking lovely at the moment so there we go there we go yarn chat persons my yarn chat friends, I hope you're having a good day. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're enjoying. And that you're taking your time when you need to. And you've got something there that you can easily enjoy and work on. Um, and this has been really nice. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, quite often people do a ramble at the end. I tend to ramble all the way through. I, don't, I haven't really got anything exciting to say apart from... Apart from the fact I hope you have a nice weekend as well. We've got nothing on this weekend, which is just glorious. We've had so much on. The husband's recently started a new position. And it is kicking his ass, quite frankly. It is, is knocking seven bells out of him. He's shattered every night. So it's really lovely that we have a weekend where he doesn't have to do anything. I've got no plans whatsoever. Um, he can sleep and rest as much as necessary and probably means I can do some sewing. I hope. I hope. So yeah, there we go. There we go, lovely people. I hope you've got a good weekend planned and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.